Now, is it just me or is military inspired watches becoming more and more popular? I'm noticing it coming out from all sorts of places, luxury brands, affordable brands, mainstream brands, AliExpress brands, as well as micro brands. But what I'm noticing is that there is, seems to be a bit of a missing story behind them. Sometimes these brands are linking to previous generations of watches that they've made. Sometimes they're linking it to a bit of a story, but there, there doesn't seem any sort of depth to it. Well, Presida seems to be doing something rather different, and that's the watch I'm going to be showing you today, because not only are they inspired by a style of watch, they're actually inspired by a specific watch, and they're also inspired by a specific person. Hello, you're watching James. My name's James, you're watching me, and I am talking about watches. Well, today I'm going to be featuring a rather special watch, something that I think is rather special, not only because of the watch itself, but because of the story that is linked to it. Today is a first impressions of the Presidus A11 Tom Bryce. This is a military-inspired field-style watch, but it's inspired by a specific watch owned by Tom Rice. Tom Rice is a veteran from World War II, and it is a watch that he actually wore and lost whilst serving in World War II. And it is quite nice not only to see a watch sort of linked to a style, but actually linked to a proper story. And it's refreshing to see a company thinking about the environment as well as their own community. They're thinking about the environment in regards to the packaging and how this watch is presented, and I'll show you that shortly. But they're also thinking about the community because they are giving back to their community, back to the people that inspired these watches, back to the veterans in the United States. Now, you would have seen that sponsored icon pop up, and that is because today's episode is sponsored by Poseidus. Poseidus reached out to me and provided me this watch. I now get to own this watch, wear this watch, enjoy this watch, and have it in my collection, but I also get to share it with you guys. And if you are interested in this one, it's going to cost $450, and I'm going to leave a link directly to this watch and to their website below. But let's flip the camera around now, and let's check out the watch that I've been talking about. So you may be wondering what's with all this crap that's in here at the moment and that is because when I first opened this Tom Rice, this A1 from Presidus, there were six things that stood out to me and number one was all the stuff that came with it or how it was packaged. Firstly, it was inside a cardboard box, very little plastic, a little bit of sticky tape. It was then wrapped up in this uh, paper cardboard, so no plastic there as well. It then came in this outer sleeve, which is obviously paper. Then the inner sleeve is all cardboard as well. Inside the watch was, was presented here, pull on the tab, all cardboard inside here. Then leads me through to the second thing that stood out to me, and that is the warranty card. Because the warranty card is this thing right here. And I was thinking, okay, this is rather interesting. Oh, what's going on here? It's a dog tag warranty card, stamped warranty card. You just scan that QR code and there's your warranty. So that was actually the number two thing that stood out to me. I really like how micro brands sort of think outside the box and do something a little bit different because that's actually quite nice and something a little bit different. Number three actually relates to the watch. And that number three thing specifically is this sort of halo effect that this crystal gives this watch. When I opened it up, I was standing in my kitchen, it was dark and the lights above were shining onto that crystal. And as you can see, it's a really cool double dome crystal, but there's quite a bit of a sort of turn there. And it was casting a bit of a halo on the dial, this really interesting light effect. You can sort of see it under these studio lights, but not quite as well. I'll try and put a photo or a bit of uh, footage on the screen now to show you what I'm meaning by that. And the number four thing that stood out to me, it's probably my favourite thing so far, is the mixture of finishes that they've used. Now these sort of vintage inspired watches, vintage and styled military watches, field watches, all tend to have sort of a one finish on the whole watch, which to me tends to feel a little bit plain, and I like it when they do something a little bit different. Because the majority of this I think is sandblasted, so it has a sort of a bead finished blasted sort of look to it, but on the top of the lugs it's polished, and on the end of the crown there's a bit of polish as well. It just breaks it up. It's done really well, and it just looks a little bit different. It's nice just to break up that sort of one look throughout the watch. Number five thing that stood out to me is the strap. It's really shiny. I'm not sure if this light is going to show it, but it's made out of nylon. It's really soft, very comfortable on wrist. Probably not exactly the style that I want. I think I'll try it on some other straps later on. But it's really nice, but it's really shiny. And I know that's not something that's particularly interesting, but hey, it stood out to me, and this section of these videos are things that stood out to me. But number six is actually the info that's on the back of this watch, because not only does it say that it is a Presidus, it is the Type A11, it is Tom Rice. Tom Rice is the 10th Airborne Division, June 6th, 
1944, the Lost Watch of D-Day. So this is actually recreating a watch that was worn by Tom Rice on D-Day, the watch that he actually lost. But as you'd expect, buying a new watch, it's going to be a little bit different to the watch that is inspired by, because the original is 32mm case diameter, this one's 38, and they also do a 42. This one's made out of stainless steel, whereas the original was made out of chrome-covered brass. Also, the original had acrylic crystal, whereas this has a double-domed uh, sapphire crystal on it, which obviously brings it up to a bit more of a modern specifications and also a slightly more modern size. So it really looks nice on wrist. And on my medium 6 and 3 quarter, 17 centimeter wrist, this 38 millimeter looks absolutely fantastic. Very, very legible, really nice and easy to look at, very comfortable on wrist, sits down nicely as well. Just a really lovely watch. In fact, it's even better than I expected after seeing it in photos. Now, as always, I'm going to be wearing this for a fair bit before I do the full review. But between now and then, how about you check out these two videos?